Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a roundup of guns and gear from the Midland Game Fair, plus the Air Arms S400 carbine on test. But first, I'm out on the farm targeting feral pigeons and collared doves. <laughs> I'm out on the farmyard today, not too sure what to expect because we haven't been here for a few weeks but now really is the time of year to get out and have a proper look around on your farmyard permissions because once that weather turns colder, pests are going to start moving in looking for the food and shelter that they'll find on the farm. Potential quarry for today includes feral pigeons, collared doves, even a chance of rats. So we'll go and have a look around now and see what's moving. My first task is to establish what pests are about and where best to target them. And I'm going to start with a snoop round an empty cattle shed. There's plenty of evidence in here to suggest that the feral pigeons have been taking advantage of my absence. Well, this shows that those ferals are still busy nesting. It's an egg here that's recently hatched. We've seen others around and they're actually birds sitting on eggs as we speak. Problem is, this particular shed's got quite a flimsy roof. It's not really a safe backstop to shoot them against, so what I'm gonna do is move down to the end of the shed where we can cover some trees that the birds will probably be flighting to before they swoop down to the farmyard, and hopefully we can pick them off from there. Well, this spot really emphasises the importance of keeping feral pigeon numbers down on the farmyard. It's right below a nest and the trough is absolutely encrusted with droppings. No doubt loads are going in there as well. Now, this shed's not in use at the moment, but others are. And the last thing you want is livestock drinking contaminated water like this. And actually looking more closely, there's actually a dead chick in there decomposing in this water. The thought of livestock drinking from there well, it really doesn't bear thinking about. Right, well, this is usually a productive spot here. Barn gives a little bit of cover. There's an overgrown hedgerow about 20, 30 metres away. Usually gives good, clear shots. The only observation I would make is that compared with when we were filming here last, when the trees weren't in leaf, there's a heck of a lot of foliage. So it's going to make shooting and filming a bit trickier but we'll give it a go and see what it produces. It's a case of playing the usual waiting game now, but I'm confident that if I'm patient, I should be rewarded with safe shots from this shooting point. The wait pays off and I eventually get a clear shot at a collared dove that swooped in past the trees and landed on the edge of the yard. One good thing with this spot, you also get the advantage of leaning shots. Collared dove in the bag now, I took up the headshot about 25 metres. That's one less farmyard pest, and I reckon we could get more action from this spot if we wait it out a little longer. Two more doves swoop in and I just need to move along the edge of the shed to line up for another clear shot. I'm aiming between the left hand bird's shoulders, a shot that offers the pellet a relatively clear path to the heart and lung area. Well, I thought that one was gonna fly on, but it's just compiling into the side of the barn that we're actually hiding in. I think it's stone dead, but I'm gonna head on over there and make sure.
Right, well I aim to hit it between the shoulders. It looks like it struck just a little bit low there, but it still obviously had enough of a whack to the heart and lung area. It's quite a slight bird. It flew on for a while, but it's come down stone dead. Let's go and pick up the other one. Although there's no livestock in this shed at present, I found the gate bolted, so I'm going to bolt it after me. If you're ever unsure, it's always safer to leave the gate closed than open. The next retrieve requires a climb over a gate, so I put my unloaded gun down before clambering over and into the cattle yard to pick up the first dove I shot. These birds are good for the pot, so I'm pleased that this is a fairly straightforward retrieve. Well that one was taken very cleanly, very neat headshot. While I was over there, I've also noticed there's a few rat runs in the bank, so that's for another day, but probably worth coming back here after dark with a lamp or night vision gear. But for now, we'll head over to the main cattle pen, see what's happening in there. The feral pigeons have got a real hold in here, so the aim is to take out as many as possible before they wise up and clear off. A quick cycle of the day state's bolt and I'm on to another. But I'm limited to taking birds that are perched in front of the steel joists, which make for a solid backstop and prevent the risk of damaging the roof panels. These birds live in filthy, crowded conditions, so they won't be ending up on the table. That's my lot from this position, so I move inside to scan for more ferals that are perched in front of those all-important joists. This is busy shooting, so I'm working as quickly as I can to clear out the pests. Ferals aren't particularly wary birds, and this one has continued feeding on the deck while I've been picking off its flock mates. This one's on a nest, and I'm not sure about the backdrop, but there are still birds in shootable positions. The Daystate Regal's 10-shot magazine is very handy for this kind of fast-fire action. Filling it back up takes me out of the game for a while, but it saves me from having to fumble in my pocket for pellets between shots. It certainly makes life easier for this sort of shooting, and really comes into its own when targeting rats after dark. Loaded up, I'm ready to get back at them, but the birds have spooked after the initial pasting. This one lingers on a joist and pays the price. I'm going to make that the last one for today. They're not the wariest of birds, but they're getting a bit flighty now, and we've taken out all the ones that are in shootable positions. Considering I thought I was just coming for a recce, I'm pleased to have made a decent dent in those feral pigeons, and I've also got a couple of collared doves that I'm taking home for the pot. The ferals, though, are gonna to have to go into the slurry pit, so all I've gotta do now is pick up the ones I can get to.
A decent bag of ferals for the Daystate Huntsman Regal there. And now it's over to the Airgun Show News for a special roundup from the Midland Game Fair. This is the Airgun Show News, brought to you by the Airgun Centre. Visitors to last week's Midland Game Fair at Western Park were treated to a packed showcase of air guns and gear, including the new black range of Wather air guns from Armex. The eye-catching lineup includes a variant of the flagship RM8 with a soft touch black coating on the stock. It's just a great job of what they've done. You've got a Walther barrel, you've got a German-made rifle, you've got a great, incredibly weather-resistant finish, and again, with the soft touch, it just really makes it, in extreme weather, a really good, positive grip on the actual weapon itself. Uh, again, the price that Walther has come into, um, this is only £469 retail, suggested. Uh, they're coming into the shops in about four weeks' time. Keeping with the dark theme, the Nova Vista Phantom Elite Sniper Rifle from the shooting party proved a real crowd puller. Its £229 price tag gets you a full power gas ram brake barrel air gun with accessory rails, bipod and scope. The stock is adjustable and there's a whole range of Piccadilly style accessory rails. Retail prices are cracking in 229 and it addresses the ever-growing market for tactical style weapons. MTC showed off their new EVX range of scopes, which should be in the shops in time for Christmas. These scopes feature 30mm tubes for optimum light transmission and boast the new MH10 reticle. What's changed? The uh, knurling ring. A lot smoother, a lot more user friendly. Still got lockable turrets. Um, one of the main features that we have changed is the uh, the reticle. So the reticle now has, a, has an M10 reticle, kind of a hybrid between a SCB and an AMD reticle. Uh, feedback from the show from customers that have looked at them is very, very good. The sniper system zoom gun light kit should cover most nocturnal hunting scenarios. The package includes a waterproof torch with a white LED that can throw out a tight spot to over 800 meters, plus scope mount, rechargeable battery and charging gear. Fully waterproof, um, it's got a lifetime guarantee, 1000 meter beam, you'll see like daylight through a scope at 400 meters with this torch. It's got a half dimmer, which it's, you've got on and off, you've got half power dimmer, you can change the LEDs within 15 seconds, they come with a charger, the clamp, the whole lot and they're only 140 pounds. Recording through the scope footage in night vision is about to get a whole lot easier thanks to the Night Sight R series. Existing Viper, Wolf and Eagle units which connect to telescopic sights to convert them all to NV with built-in recorders in the camera module. We're adding recording to the camera unit so we've got integral recording and this is the important bit because what we can do now this little groove here um, we slot a, a micro SD card into there and press the red button at the back and hey presto we're recording anything that we can see on the screen and your, your pals can be sat with their iPhones or their iPads actually watching everything you do, recording everything and uploading it immediately. So there'll be a Viper unit that has a camera, a Wolf unit that has a camera and an Eagle unit with a camera and we will also sell the camera separately on its own for people that have got existing, uh, existing units and they want to upgrade and have a recording unit. The fair also hosted the keenly contested European field target at championships. Conor McFlynn from Northern Ireland shot a clear round on day one and went on to win, pushing England shooters Neil Haig and Dave Schofield into second and third. Young Archie Douglas could soon be a name to watch out for on the FT leaderboards. Air Arms invited the talented 10-year-old to the game fair after he used his S200 to score 34 in his first ever competition. Archie got to meet his Team Air Arms heroes, including international FT superstar Nick Jenkinson, who treated him to a one-on-one -on -one masterclass. And finally, in other Game Fair news, the CLA Game Fair has been cancelled. There'll be no fair next year after the CLA said it will no longer run the event effective immediately. The organisation blamed declining ticket sales, leading to substantial losses. But the fair might not be dead yet. 
Organizers said they would open a period of consultation with other organizations about how the fair might continue. And other show organizers have already expressed an interest in holding an event. That was the Airgun Show News. This week's test gun has impressive pedigree, yet is still surprisingly affordable. It's the Air Arms S400, a very accurate single shot PCP with a price tag of £466. The S400 series is a big favourite with target shooters, but its accuracy is also a big advantage in the hunting field, and this air gun is also recognised as a serious sporter. Measuring 91 centimetres from end to end and tipping the scales at just over 2.8 kilos unscoped, the S400 carbine is relatively light and compact. That means it's a sort of air gun you can carry around the fields all day without getting arm ache, and it's also extremely pointable. The review gun has a dedicated right hand beach stock. The long forend features razor sharp checkering which is in just the right place and also extends around the underside. Apart from really helping to improve grip, that checkering looks very neat and is also present on both sides of the pistol grip. The contours of the pistol grip fill your hand perfectly and set you up just right for the trigger. The high profile cheek piece gives great alignment between eye and scope and there's also a soft rubber butt plate which sits very comfortably in the shoulder. But this stock isn't just about function. The spacer and the capping on the pistol grip gives a real touch of class. Finish and engineering are of a very high standard. The scope rails provide sufficient clamping options to mount most optics and being a single shot there's no magazine to foul the scope tube though you do need to leave sufficient space for your fingers for reloading. The muzzle brake really suits the lines of the gun, but you may want to fit Airarm's Q-Tec silencer if you want to mute it right down for hunting. Filling the S400 is a cinch. Just unscrew the dust cap at the front of the cylinder and attach Airarm's super safe T-bar connector and fill to 190 bar. The inlet even features a filter to prevent dust and grit from getting into the internals. The 177 calibre carbine gave around 60 shots at just under the UK legal limit and you can expect about 80 in 2.2. You can keep an eye on air reserves via the gauge in the belly of the stock. To cock the gun you pull the bolt right the way back. That also exposes the pellet channel and loading them in the right way round by hand can initially seem a bit fiddly but it's a knack you very quickly master. Once you've got a pellet in place you push the bolt back home to probe it into the breech and the gun is loaded and ready to fire. I really like air arms triggers and the one on the test gun is a real pleasure to use. It's comfortable and the two stage action is so crisp and predictable that using it quickly becomes subconscious. It's fully adjustable, but the one on the test gun was so good that I've left it alone. The safety button is situated at the top of the trigger blade. Now, I don't like safety catches that are too close to the trigger, but the important thing is that this air gun has one and it does what it's supposed to do. So, the S400 carbine has a very slick trigger and is renowned for its accuracy. Let's see if I can do it justice on the test range. Well, that is pretty much what I'd expected. We have got a slight breeze today, but in spite of that, the 177 caliber test gun has knocked out a five shot group that falls well within 10 millimeters from center to center at 25 meters. The S400 carbine is a really enjoyable air gun to shoot, but it's also a very easy air gun to shoot accurately. So, 
That's the Air Arms S400 Carbine, a handsome, accurate and competitively priced PCP that's made in England. That combination of sporting pedigree and accuracy I means it's just as at home in the hunting field as it is on the target range. And you don't have to have a multi-shot air gun to be an effective hunter. I've got an S400 carbine of my own and it's given years of first class performance in the field. That's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.